military and paramilitary uh, agencies we have established? Well, um, like I said, uh, we've just submitted the report yesterday, and I don't want to go into some of the specific of the recommendations. But generally, one of the key findings of the report is uh, we are approaching internal security from a bit uncoordinated uh, way in this country. Mm. Uh, we have a um, couple of policy documents that speaks to internal security, but it's not comprehensive enough to address key policy objective in terms of what I exactly the policy objective we want to achieve with internal security. And when you have um, the policies not talking to themselves or the institutions that are supposed to e implement the policies not talking to themselves, you have all sorts of issues, interagency rivalry, um, uncoordinated uh, internal security activities. And I think these are the key issues that must have to be addressed so that uh, whatever government is doing, it will be done in a very uh, scientific and comprehensive manner uh, to achieve the key policy and objectives. Energy. And Mr. Onwocha, let me ask you, you know, when you look at the upcoming election and you look at potentially the implementation of the recommendations that uh, have been sent forward by uh, the course 40 of the Institute, both campaign documents have two different approaches. Uh, I know there are many more than just two campaign documents, but we've been referring to the top two. Uh, the, the, the PDP presidential document essentially calls for restructuring, calls for devolution, and calls ultimately for the establishment of state police, while the, uh, the APC's uh, presidential document essentially calls for devolution of funding. Uh, bringing the funding from the instead of the national leadership of the police down to the divisional police commands directly. Uh, what are your thoughts on the approaches of both documents and how might that affect the implementation of some of the recommendations being discussed this morning? Um, I have no reservation immediately in telling you that the APC document falls short of what is expected. What we need is a holistic address and implementation or what you already have, and what is already in the field. When you say you want to devolve payments, it's not all about money. It's about, it's about the field work. It's about getting communities to key in to what you are trying to present. It's about looking at the problems existing in the field. What instructions do you give? Where do they report crime? How do they identify criminals? These are the practical aspects of the implementation of community policy. When you say that a whole document as the next level document, as it's called, says that all, uh, the, all it refers to about police is that the government will pay attention to the government of the payment. This does not meet the standard. The PDP, um, uh, the other side, uh, Dr. as you mentioned, well, that refers to a total um, restructuring of the police towards state police. Now, that comes to what I was saying earlier. You hear the vice president emphasizing on state police. That he supports it, he wants it, he believes that's the way forward. And when you hear the president, he doesn't seem to so sure. He doesn't seem so forward on that. Why is there that conflict in the government? The problems with community policing, policing as a whole, have to do with policy, with government, with bureaucracy. We need to get these things to work. There's too much talk. There's too much paperwork. There's too much committee. We have to ask the police, what are the problems you face? At, at, in towns. Well, how, do we, well, how do people respond to you? What do you need? Let's get working. Let's stop talking. Mr. Mwacha, when you talk to officials, uh, particularly from, uh, from this federal government, this administration, they'll tell you that the issues at the local level of policing in the country have to do with the inability of police officers to be effectively mobilized. Uh, so you'll have police officers in trucks that don't have fuel, for example, because the money that filtered down didn't get to the point where they could even fuel their cars. Or, you know, you have issues of enumeration or remuneration. You have issues of uh, failing equipment, etc. If, if, if you don't think money is an issue in terms of uh, at local policing, community policing, what are some of the other factors that you think the federal government should look into to provide a more robust solution? I didn't say money was not uh, important. Money is important. But all these things we are talking about now should have been addressed right in the first six months of, of the administration. By now, we should be looking at, oh, since we rolled out this scheme, what, how, how, how far have we gone? What progress have we made? We can't be talking about oh, just looking at starting. Pol police not having vehicles, 
Now have the money. These are <laughs> these are parents have been there for fifty years. When do we start working? Mm. The, the, the four years are almost gone. So we 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 need to be able to program our time very well. When you come into office, properly uh, analyze, properly articulate what are the problems are and what time frame you have to implement them. We can't still be talking about formulating policies at the dying stage of the government. It's a waste of time. It's a waste of four years. Dr. Usman, is there is there a middle ground here, do you think? You know, when you have on the one side, uh, as Mr. Mwacha has pointed out, he says that the APC's approach to this matter, the federal government's approach to this matter falls short, that the focus on money is a, a bit too uh, myopic. Uh, when you look at the other side, restructuring is the solution being offered. I, if these, if these are considered two extremes, is there a middle ground where a kind of a low-hanging fruit that the federal government or the next administration coming in, whoever that, that may uh, be uh, led by, would be able to grab and say, we can do this today? Well, uh, much as I don't want to go into the politics of it, but uh, I think uh, it's beyond probably what um, uh, my friend has said. Uh, First, I think there is a confusion uh, in terms of uh, community policing as a concept or as a philosophy. Uh, it doesn't necessarily involve establishing a distinct security outfit like the state police. Uh, you can embed community policing in whatever policing structure that you have. Uh, from the countries we visited, we've uh, seen a federal uh, systems like Canada that still the provinces uh, linked onto their national police, the Canadian Mounted Police. Uh, but the point is, whatever structure you have, whether you have police at the local government, state or federal level, community policing as a philosophy, as a strategy could be infused. It simply means getting the communities involved in the process. Now, um, the problem with the Nigerian police force, like uh, I've said, our mandate went beyond the Nigerian police. We looked at the entire security architecture, and therefore all the internal security agencies were extracted as part of the process. Uh, yes, the Nigerian police has its own structural problem, and uh, there are a number of uh, police reforms, at least three, with some white papers that have been issued lying in the last 15 years or more. Uh, so probably it's not an issue that started with this current government. It has been a lingering issue. Uh, some of the key findings from those reforms, uh, we reflected them in the report, and they were not implemented. Um, one, for example, about restructuring the police. To Even within the Nigerian police force, you can be able to do some restructuring that would give more operational powers, uh, for example, to the DIGs, uh, and maybe the geopolitical zones, so that could be quick response to some of the issues. I, I want to get to one of the recommendations, one of the issues you raised, yes. uh, which was the issue of synergy, interagency synergy, and even synergy within one agency, uh, particularly the police. What is the role, ultimately, of, of, of the establishment of a technological backbone, a, a criminal database, ultimately, to ensure that everybody, multiple agencies, can be seeing a single window into the issue of criminal justice administration. What are your thoughts on that? And how much of, an, uh, of, 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 a, of a priority should that be? Well, th that is one of the major issues because uh, um, technology now could be appropriately deployed to resolve a number of issues, even the personnel issues, because there is a serious issue with the police citizen ratio. But if you use technology appropriately, you can handle that. Now. The, I, I'm, I'm sorry, sir. Unfortunately, we have run out of time on this segment. I really wish you could have concluded your point. But I thank you, both of you gentlemen, for coming on this morning and sharing your thoughts thank with you us. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So I have been speaking with two gentlemen, uh, Mr. Emeka Onwocha, who is a policy consultant, and Dr. Nasiruddin Usman, who is a directing staff for the National Policy of Strategy of, of Policy and Strategic Studies, NIPSS. At this juncture, we throw it back over to Lagos where Chamberlain is standing by. Chamberlain.